Okay, today we're going to look at the situation of a four centimeter tall object placed five centimeters in front of a concave mirror, which has a focal length of 10 centimeters. So in this problem, we're going to draw a ray tracing diagram for this object, as well as go through and use the mirror and magnification equations to determine where the image is going to appear in this mirror. Now this problem presents a unique set of challenges because the object is so close to the mirror. So we're gonna to have to be extremely careful about how we draw our rays as we go through this problem. Now, despite the fact that this ray tracing diagram is perhaps a bit more challenging than others, that doesn't mean we change what we do in this problem. So we're still gonna start by drawing our principal ray starting at the top of our object headed straight toward the mirror. And when that principal ray strikes the mirror, it's going to bounce off of the mirror and pass through the focal point. The next ray we'll look at is the center ray, or the ray which passes through the center point of the mirror. Now the center point is over here. So if we draw a ray as though it was gonna go through the center point, it's never actually going to strike the mirror. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a ray from the top of our object towards the mirror as though it had passed through this center point over here. And when that ray strikes the mirror and bounces back, it's gonna pass through the center point. And last we have the focal ray. Now typically the focal ray would be the ray which passed from the object through the focal point. But much like we saw with the center point here, if a ray travels through the focal point, it's never actually going to strike the mirror. So what we're gonna do is again, draw this ray from the top of this object towards the mirror as though it had passed through the focal point. And when that ray strikes the mirror, it's going to bounce off the mirror parallel to the principal axis this way. Now in looking at these three reflected rays, it appears as though the three rays never converge and therefore an image is not formed, but that's not true. If we backtrack each of these rays to the other side of this mirror, we'll find they do converge somewhere back here. And this point right here where the rays converge is where our image will form. Now this result might seem a little strange, so let's go through and take a look at the mirror equation in order to confirm this result. So in this problem, the focal length is 10 centimeters. The object distance is five centimeters. And we're solving for DI. And we find that the image distance is negative 10 centimeters. So 10 centimeters is simply telling us that our image forms 10 centimeters from the mirror. And this negative is a pretty big deal here. This is telling us that the image is on the opposite side of the mirror as the object. So you can think of a mirror as having a positive and a negative side. The positive side being where the object and light actually are, and the negative side being what we call the virtual side of the mirror. So this negative 10 centimeters is telling us that we have a virtual image sitting behind the mirror. Next, let's go through and confirm the magnification and expected height of this image. Now our image distance is negative 10 over the object distance, which is five. And this gives us a magnification of two. And this magnification of two is positive, which means that our image is upright. Last, let's use our magnification to go through and work out the actual height of the image. Knowing our magnification is two, and our object height is four, we find the image height is eight centimeters. So in this problem, we've drawn a ray tracing diagram for an object which has been placed extremely close to a concave mirror. And we've confirmed that result using the mirror equation as well as the magnification equations in order to find the image distance, magnification, and image height. And on that note, that's all for now.